It's so good to be here to share with you. You know, I just came back from a family trip. And as soon as I came back on that day, I went to a wedding. I attended a wedding about a week ago. And in that wedding, I witnessed two people making a commitment to one another. And you know, nowadays in weddings, people like to make their own vows, right? They like to make up their own vows to say to each other. But you know what? In that wedding, not only did they make up, prepare their own vows, but they also said the most traditional vows. And I believe there is nothing more romantic and powerful as the vows that has been taken from the common book of prayer. And we know that vow, right? From this day onwards, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do us apart. And then... Right at the end, they say, I pledge to you my faithfulness. Wow, that's quite a pledge, right? And when you say that pledge, think about it. It is at great risk and great cost. Because what you're saying is, no matter what, good or bad, I will be with you. There will be challenges. There will be ups and downs. There will even be heartbreaks, but I will be with you until the very end. That is what that vow is saying, and it's powerful. So you're thinking we are into the scent series, and why are we talking about marriage? Last week, uh, Pastor John Binon talked to you about God's commission, remember? It is not your plan, it is not your mission. Your purpose in your life is to fulfill God's mission. It's all about Him, yeah? This week, we're going to be looking at five big words in the book of Hosea. And we're going to be looking at the marriage of Hosea and Goma. You may have, you might have known this story, but it is a marriage between a prophet and a prostitute. We're going to go deeper into it. But, you know, why are we using, why are we talking about marriage? Because it's true in the Bible, often our relationship with Christ is illustrated through the metaphor of marriage, right? In the New Testament, we know Christ is the bridegroom and we are the church, the bride. And even in the Old Testament, if you look through the Old Testament, if you see in Isaiah, Jeremiah, God relates to himself as Israel's husband. He says, I am your husband, meaning you are mine. You belong to me. And that is the type of relationship God wants to have with his people. And you know, God redeemed, delivered the Israelites out of bondage, out of slavery, so that they can worship him, so that they can be his people, be faithful to him. But we know throughout the Old Testament, Israel was unfaithful. Israel was adulterous. That's what the word Bible used. They've been adulterous. They've been going after other idols, worshipping other gods. They show no compassion. They turn their back from God. And I think the life of Israel is most vividly illustrated in this book, the book of Hosea where Hosea is the prophet, and he's been asked to marry a prostitute, Goma. And it's a bad marriage. Why? Because Goma keeps her adulterous ways. She keeps going away from Hosea and going to other lovers, being adulterous and unfaithful. And you know, a little bit about the background, the time that Hosea was a prophet, Israel had just been under the oppression of Assyrians. But God delivered them. And now they are living better, more comfortable. But what do they do? They forget about God again. And they treat each other bad. The, 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 the gap between the rich and the poor was great. There was no one feeding the poor. They were neglecting the widows. They were neglecting the poor. They were neglecting orphans. There was a lot of social injustice, and they were still worshipping other idols. And it is in this context 
that we have the book of Hosea, where Hosea has been called out to speak against the injustices and the idolatry. But also at the same time, he calls them back to God, God, calling them to come back to God. And this is where we have the key verse for today. And I want you to read it with me. Hosea chapter 2, verse 19 to 20. Verse 19 to 20. Okay, let's read this together. And I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you to me in righteousness, justice, in steadfast love, and in mercy. I will betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord. Amen. What does betroth mean? It means a binding agreement in marriage. That's what it is. Here, God is saying, I will marry you. I'm going to have a commitment to you. It's a binding a commitment. And he says it how many times? Three times. In these two verses, he says it three times. Committing himself to the people of Israel, to his people. What is he saying? He is saying, I'm not going to forsake you. I'm not going to leave you behind. I'm not going to let you go. You are mine. That's what he's saying. Turn to the person next to you and say, you belong to God. He's made up his mind. And under what context is he saying this to Israel? Was Israel being obedient? Was Goma being obedient and faithful? No. He said this when Goma, the wife, already had three children with Hosea, but she was still being unfaithful. She was still going out to her lovers. And, and, and she justifies her rebellion by saying this, verse 4 to 5, chapter 2, verse 4 to 5. She said, I will go after my lovers who give me my bread and my water, my wool and my flax, my oil and my drink. What is she saying? I'm going to go after my lovers. Why? Because they give me water. They give me bread. They give me what I need. They give me what I want. They provide for me. That's why I'm going after them. And you know what? That's like us today, right? Humanity, humanity has been under this temptation all the time. We go after things that we think will satisfy us. And that's what he's been doing. They look to false gods for provision. But it is God who provides and today, what do you go after? Do you go after people? Do you go after money? Do you go after status? Do you go after bad relationships? What do you go after? Goma was going after her lovers because they were providing for her. She's deceived. And this is the society we live in now. You know, sometimes I have people come up to me and ask me, Pastor, can I buy the lottery? The jackpot is big, pastor. I need the money. Why are you not giving me a chance to make myself rich? They've lost their hope in God. Things of the world seem so attractive that can lure us away. And we tend to go after other things because they are so appealing. You know why? Have you heard of the thing called open marriage? Who's heard of that? It is a, it's a true thing. What is an open marriage? This is where you get to stay in your marriage, but you have the freedom to go and have relationship with other people. It sounds good, huh? For people who have an unfulfilling marriage, for people who are going through dark times, they think they want a way out. But I don't want to be unfaithful. Let's have an open marriage. We can keep the contract. We can keep our agreement. But we can do other things with other people outside of this marriage. And they think, wow, it sounds, you know, to many people, this sounds so attractive, so appealing. We can keep our fidelity at the same time be with other people. It's so wrong. It is so wrong. But things like this, it sounds so liberating. It sounds so appealing. It sounds good. And people go after that. 
And you know, today I understand there's a lot of struggles because the things of this world seem so attractive. And sadly, Jesus and the church become the least of our priorities. And that's what's happening with Goma. There's so many things that draw her away from Hosea. There are so many things that draw people away from God. And you know what happens? Hosea uses different ways to keep her with him. What does he do? Verse 6. Therefore, I will hedge up her way with thorns. Verse 6. And I will build a wall against her so that she cannot find her paths. What does he do? He puts, builds, you know, he grows thorns so that she can't go out. He makes up a wall so that she cannot go through. But what does she do? She still turns her back to Hosea and she finds her way out. She goes to her lovers. It's like people going on an obstacle course. She is so stubborn. She is so stiff necked. She, you know, she tries every way to get out. And that's what she does. And you know what? God sometimes do the same thing to us. He blocks away. He does all that he can. He closes the door. He allows us to go through trials so that we can turn back to him. But you know what? Because we are so stubborn, time and time again, we turn our back to God. Hosea tries so hard to keep Goma from her lovers. God tries every way to draw us back. But we are stubborn. And the people of Israel is the same. They break that covenant relationship. And worst of all, when they go out to the other gods for help, they also give credit to their idols. Because in Hosea 2 verse 8, it says, She did not know that it was I who gave her the grain the wine and the oil, who lavished on her silver and gold, which they use for bow. It is God who provides, but they give the credit to the other idols, to other things. And God is saying, it is me. I am the one that provides for you. We know this, right? Psalms 24, 1, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Deuteronomy, behold, to the Lord your God belong heaven and the heaven of heavens. Everything belongs to God and he provides us with everything. Turn to your neighbor one more time and say, you belong to God. So today, acknowledge him as your provider. Amen. Because otherwise, Hosea 4.10, it says this, if you do not, what happens? They will eat and still be hungry. They will play the prostitute and gain nothing from it. I'm reading, uh, is it the same version? Yeah, same version. For they have deserted the Lord to worship other gods. Yeah, all that you do will be in vain. You will always be hungering for something. You're always at a loss. You will not gain anything. And then uh, wine has robbed my people of their understanding. They ask a piece of wood for advice. That's what people do nowadays, right? They worship other things. They look at zodiac signs for help, for advice. They think a stick can tell them the future. Longing after idols has made them foolish. Say with me, foolish. They have played the prostitutes, serving other gods and deserting their God. If you were Hosea, what would you do? You would probably leave. <laughs> you would want out of that relationship. No more. I'm done. You would divorce her, right? But you know what? Hosea does something shocking. He renews the vow. Even though she keeps going out, unfaithful, rebellious, adulterous, he wants her back. In verse 15, he says, I will win her back once again. You know, this is the heart of God. It demonstrates the love that God has for us. No matter how much we have done, 
how mad and you know how much how sinful we have been. We are. He didn't say, "I'm done with you. I want out." No, I still want to be in this relationship. He renews the vow in spite of her infidelity. I will win her back once again. Verse fifteen. And how does God win her back? And we read that just now before, right? Verse 19 to 20. Let's read this again. And I will betroth to you to me forever. I will betroth you to me in righteousness, in justice, in steadfast love, and in mercy. I will betroth you to me in faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord. How does God win us back? Not by force, not by manipulation. Not by you know power and dominance, not by fear, not with money, but with his justice, righteousness, steadfast love, mercy, and faithfulness. He uses that to woo us back. That is like a marriage dowry. He uses that to woo us back, and it's like in Romans, right? Don't you know that it's God's kindness that leads us to repentance. That's what he wants for us, and these are the five big words today: righteousness, justice, unfailing love, mercy, and faithfulness. When we speak of righteousness and justice, it's talking about God's nature. It means He will act according to His word, and He will do the right thing for you. That's what righteousness and justice means. Remember in Psalms 23, it says, He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Because that's who He is. He will do it. He's not going to lead you on a wrong path. He will lead you on the right path. All that He does for you is right and good. He's righteous. He's just. That's why we can trust in Him. He works the best for us. And He is also... Unfailing in his love, that means he's not going to let you go. He will stay with you no matter what. And mercy, that means you know, like um, like a womb-like motherly love. You know, like a baby in your, a mother's womb, they are helpless, right? They cannot do anything. It, 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 the, the, the baby relies on the mother's nutrients, care, food, everything relies on the mother. That's mercy. That's compassion. Just like a mother to a child, protecting the baby, providing for the baby, caring for the baby. That's compassion. That's mercy. Love on the baby, and faithfulness. Wow, that means yeah, I'm not going to let go of you. Like a person holding a baby, you're not going to drop the baby, right? You're going to hold on to the baby. Faithfulness. He will never let you go, and that is our God. That is our God. I will stand by you. I will do right with you. My heart is for you. I will do everything to protect you, despite of your failing, despite of your weaknesses. I won't let you go. These five words—they're not just words; they are vows that God makes to you, and all this. Is embodied in the person of Jesus. Yes, yeah, that is who our God is. And the interesting thing is, you know, the name Hosea means salvation. It comes from the same root word of Joshua, and also that's where we get the name Jesus, salvation. Because in Hosea chapter three, you know what happens? Gomer gets into trouble once again. She gets sold to slavery. And then in chapter three, Hosea had to buy her back. Hosea had to redeem her, and that is like us, right? Jesus redeemed us, redeemed us from our slavery. And in the whole account, Hosea is always the one making the initiative. He is always the one going back to her. He should be the one breaking the bond. But he is the one always going back to her, time and time again, and that is like Jesus. While we were still sinners, Jesus died for our sins on the cross. Even when we did not deserve it, you know. Today, you and I, we are no better than Goma. 
We are just like her. We've all committed spiritual adultery. Now, I'm not going to make you say that to the person next to you, but we all have. We have to admit it. But yet, God betrothed me and you to him in righteousness, in justice, in mercy, in steadfast love, in faithfulness. That is our God. He didn't give us what we deserve. We deserve punishment. The wrath of God should be upon us. He didn't give us what we deserve. He gave us what we need, which is forgiveness, peace, joy, life, freedom, and power. He gave us what we need. And aren't you glad that even when we are faithless, God remains faithful? Amen. Amen. You know, once you realize the unconditional love of God that he has for us, I think our only response is to love him back. Right? Love him back. He calls us to belong to him once again. And not only so, he calls us to belong to him, he also fills us with his Holy Spirit so that we can be partakers of his divine nature. That means we can be like Jesus. He calls us to him, not only to belong to him, so that we can become more like him. Turn to the person and say, you belong to Jesus. And also, you can be like Jesus. Hallelujah. And Jesus, he came for the sinners. He came for the adulterers. He came for the sick. He came for the poor. He came for those who did not deserve grace. He came for those who were sinners. That's what Jesus did. And you know what? Today, we are called to do the same. Because in John 20, 21, he says, As the Father has sent me, Jesus, even so, Jesus, I'm sending you. I'm sending you. You are sent, Acts 26, 18, to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and to turn from the power of Satan to God. That's what we are sent to do. So today, be more like Jesus, not like Jonah. Jonah was given an assignment, but what did he do? He turned his back from God because he felt, those people don't deserve it. I'm not going to waste my time. I'm gonna, not going to waste my troubles. I'm going to decide who needs Jesus. And he turns his back. Jonah refused the assignment. Don't be like Jonah. Turn to the person and say, don't be like Jonah. We are to be more like Jesus. We've been sent to walk in righteousness, in justice, in steadfast love, in mercy, and in faithfulness. And remember, it is his righteousness, his justice, not yours. Not yours. You know, today in the world, we talk about an eye for an eye. That is worldly, secular justice. If you did this, you deserve this. If you did this, you're going to be doing, you're going to get this back. If we use our own justice, our own secular kind of thinking, you know what? We will never say sorry, right? Because I'm not wrong. That should be, the other person should be saying sorry. We will never honor people because we think everyone is so rude. I'm not going to honor anyone. But that is not the way. And you know, in society, we talk a lot about uh, equal rights and opportunities, right? What God talks about is feed the hungry. Don't neglect the widows and the orphans. That is justice. That is righteousness. So today, we're going to practice not our own justice or our own righteousness, but who God is. Be more like Jesus. And you know what? I want these five words to be guiding your life. If we're going to be sent, we're not going to be acting like Jonah. We're not going to be acting like you know, the secular way, the worldly way, but we're going to be more like Jesus. So we're going to, in a second, I'm going to get all of us to pray and just embrace these five words in your life so that you can become more like Jesus. And you know what? Sometimes when we do that, 
God will open doors for you. And when God opens the door, walk in. And you know what? Sometimes maybe God has provided a door for you to open it and walk in. Sometimes it needs, we need to do it by faith. Because, you know, like I have just come back from Sydney, right? And my parents are still there. And, um, and we, for, this, for this trip, uh, my husband and I, we've been talking. We said, you know, my parents, they are still unbelievers. So we said, you know, we got to somehow, you know, let them know the love of Christ. We've done it for so many, so many, so many years. And you know what? And we were waiting for a door to open. We were waiting for opportunities. And then I think it was near the end of our trip. Still, nothing came up. It was like they are very hard, stubborn. They're always doing their own thing, talking. There was no way we could. They didn't seem like there was an open door. But then you know what? My husband, then Pastor Fron, he said, why don't we open a door? And what he did was, I'm going to talk to your mum. I'm going to ask her to sit down for five minutes so that I can tell her what the cross means. And so I said, oh, try that. I don't know whether that's going to work. So he did it. One morning while my mum was doing something, he just went up to her and said, hey, uh, mum, do you have five minutes? And she said, why? She says, five minutes. I just want to talk to you. Why, you know, we love Jesus. And she kind of, huh, huh, you know, and she said, well, yeah, okay. And so he got her to sit down. She said, he said, five minutes, maybe 10. That's it. Just listen. You don't have to do anything. So she, he got her seated down and he went through the gospel with her. What the cross means. Why we love Jesus. What Jesus has done for us. And you know what? My mom, she talked a little bit more. And then we found out why she has been so reluctant to commit her life to Christ. And throughout that conversation, we know, we can hear it. She knows Jesus is good. But there were just things in her life that she could not let go of. There was a bondage. There were curses. There were uh, 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 vows that she had made for other gods. So we understood we didn't force her, but we know, ha, huh, that opened up something so we can work on that a little bit more. Praise God for that. Because if we didn't open that door, we could still be at a loss. We didn't know what was happening. So I'm still praying. I'm still praying for my family. So ladies, maybe God has opened a door for you to tell the good news to the people around you. But even if... It seems like it hasn't been opened. Maybe the door is already there. God just wants you to take that step of faith and open it. And when you do, walk in righteousness, justice, steadfast love, mercy, and faithfulness. Be like Jesus. We are sent to tell the good news. Amen. So I want you all just to stand right now and start praying. Let the heart of God be our heart. Let the things that God cares about be the things we care about. And let us just dwell and embrace the love of God in our lives so that we can be the channel to share that love. Let us not be like Jonah. We keep refusing the assignment. We're not doing our job. No, let us from today onwards be more like Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right now, I just want you to commit yourself to God once again and say, I belong to you. Thank you. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for not letting me go. Thank you. Despite of my weakness, despite of all the things that I do wrong, you still love me. You're still wooing me back to you. So today, Lord, I come with my heart surrendered, open, my heart bent before you, allowing you to love on me, allowing your love to fill me so that I 
can be filled with all your goodness and to walk in your ways. Father, I just want to thank you. And Father, I pray, open up our eyes to be able to see the doors of opportunities that you have opened up for us. There are people around us, gomers, around us, who do not know you, who turn their back to you, who keep walking away from you. But today, Father, I want to exercise love on these people. Oh Lord, don't let me be self-righteous. Don't let me be angry. Let me be like you, to walk in your ways and to share the love of God with them. Father, give us boldness. Give us courage. And Father, I pray, even when I don't see the door open, Father, let me be able to create opportunities where the door is already there. We just need to step in by faith. So Lord, I thank You because we belong to You. And Father, the assignment that You have given us, the commission, Your commission, let us live it out. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.